Hi guys, and uh, welcome to my very first garage review. I am planning to do a garage review roughly every six months, uh, mainly as a record to uh, see how far I've progressed since the uh, last garage review. Um, as this is the first, I'm sure many of you have seen a pile of tanks in my garage and uh, are wondering just how many tanks I have. To be honest, I don't know. Uh, but what I will do is um, show you why I'm playing some tanks and not playing others um, and also uh, give you a few pointers as I go through the garage lineup as to how I uh, develop crews for my tanks. Um, I think the easiest way to do this is to uh, go via nation by nation and um, I'll just talk you through it. So uh, first nation up is probably going to be the Chinese, yep. Um, okay, Chinese. I am currently on the uh, 5916. Uh, it's a passive scout. It's uh, got a nice crew layout. Um, typically Chinese crew layout for light tanks. It's fully upgraded and uh, I've currently got 24,000, 25,000 on it. Still some way to go to the WZ-131. This is not a tank I'm going to be keeping. Uh, it's fun in the right circumstances, but uh, I just find that you can't do a heck of a lot of damage in it, even though it has a nice auto loader. Uh, it's got amazing camo value, and it's fast, it's agile. I like playing it, but it's just too situational. Um, you uh, die very easily if you're spotted, and um, as I say, you can't really have a big impact on the game due to the uh, low penetration on your gun, even with premium ammo. So, uh, yeah, I'm close to moving on with this one. Uh, just about 20,000 XP left to get, and then the uh, 5916 will be sold, and I'll be moving on to the WZs. The next Chinese tank I have is the... Uh, Type 64, which is a new purchase to my garage. I'm still learning how to play it. It is fun, uh, but it does have a radio operator, which the other Chinese light tanks don't have, which means I've got to train up a radio operator from scratch. I was lucky enough to have one left over from the M5A1 Stewart, so uh, I got a head start on my radio operator. Um, but other than that, it's the 5916 crew that goes in here and uh, gets a little bit more XP. Likewise, the uh, 5916 crew also uh, are currently in the uh, Type 62, which is another premium scout. This is basically a stock WZ-131, uh, I believe, or maybe 132. I believe it's a stock 131. Uh, it's still a good tank, and I do enjoy it because even though the gun doesn't have the best penetration, it has enough penetration with normal ammo if you uh, flank and hit sides and rear, or uh, if you do load up premium, it uh, gives you a pretty decent pen. Um, so basically, uh, this is a tank I can do damage in, and I can have a bigger influence on the match rather than the uh, 5916 by playing in. Uh, moving on, we have the uh, Type 58, which is the Chinese medium. Um, I'm still going to be playing this tank for a long, long time, I think. I recently unlocked the last engine. I'm up to close to 11,000 XP, but I'm going to have to unlock the IS-2 and the T-34-1. The uh, crew aren't great. Um, some of them still haven't reached uh, 100%. But uh, when these crew members do get up there, these are going to be continuing down the medium line. And uh, we're going to uh, use the uh, 112 crew to uh, go down the IS-2 line. So uh, this is going to be my future IS-2 crew. Or if I don't like the IS-2, they're going to move on from there. But uh, I'm still building these guys up. Uh, so that's the 112, the uh, Tier 8 Premium Chinese tank. So, Chinese was quick. Uh, France is the latest nation I have started playing, so you'll notice a lot of the tanks are low tier. ELC AMX, I am having a blast in. The crew aren't fully trained yet. They don't have six cents or full camo ratings yet, but I'm still having a lot of fun in this tank. Uh, so, as you notice, it's camoed up. If I'm going to keep a tank, it's camoed up, usually. 
Uh, the exception would be scouts I'm not keeping where I pay for camo with credits for those guys. But um, this is a tank I'm keeping. It's already camoed up and I'm looking forward to getting a really, really well trained crew in here. Um, the D2, uh, again, it's a tank I've uh, started playing recently because I've only just started going up the French line. The crew started at 75%. I have already unlocked the next tank. However, I uh, want to get the crew up a little bit more and I also want to get my mastery badge in the uh, B2. I haven't, ma or D2, I haven't managed that yet. So, uh, excuse me. <coughs> Uh, excuse me in advance that was so yep d2 still uh, going to be playing this now and again till I get the mastery badge and then we'll move on the uh, FCM 50 T is a new purchase this is the first time you are seeing this tank I have not played it yet but I decided that I needed a uh, another French premium to uh, level crews up in for uh, future tanks as you can see, there is 75%. I did spend a little bit of gold on the commander to get the uh, benefit of the view range. This thing is monstrous view range. And uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, playing this tank. I should be playing it uh, on stream very, very soon. So, uh, new purchase. Don't know what it's like, but I um, have a feeling I'm going to like it. It seems to have a great gun. So, uh, like all French tanks, not great armor at the higher tiers, but... Uh, its gun is pretty good, uh, even with the uh, premium ammo, it's not the best, but it's good. Uh, accuracy is decent, aim time is decent, uh, rate of fire is decent, so I'm uh, looking forward to it. The uh, next French tank in the lineup is the FCM 36 Pack 40. This is a beast at tier 3, a must have to be honest for every single player. Um, I currently don't have a crew in it because they're uh, sitting in the uh, Samoa Sao 40. Um, so, uh, yep, pack 40. Premium tank, using it to train up my uh, French TD crews. Uh, as soon as I find a French TD that I actually like, I will probably leave my current crew in it and start training up a new crew. But uh, moving on, we're on the uh, Sao 40. Sao 40 is one of my most hated tanks in game at the moment. Um, I've managed to do a hell of a lot of damage in some games in this tank, and I've managed to uh, have games with five or six kills. They're very rare, but I haven't managed a mastery badge yet. So uh, even though I have uh, unlocked the uh, S35CA, which I am looking forward to, it seems to have a great gun. Um, I'm stuck with this thing till I get the mastery badge. Um, so it doesn't help, that, or it doesn't hurt, that the crew are leveling up while I'm trying to get the uh, mastery badge in it. But uh, yeah, can't wait to get out of this tank. The uh, next tank up is the uh, premium French arty, no longer available in the gift shop. And I hate this arty. The aim time is pretty good, the reload time is pretty good, but the ammo at tier 5, just terrible. Um, I honestly do not know if I have ever done full damage with a full penetration on this gun. Um, it uh, basically tickles heavy tanks, and if when you consider the fact that you're running into tier seven heavies in it, you know you're going to be doing ten damage, twelve damage, twenty damage. Um, it's not uh, it's not a great arty. The gun really, really lets it down, or at least the ammo lets it down. Uh, final tank I have is a new purchase, haven't played it yet. Um, put a, a relatively new crew into it. I stole some crew from other tanks and spent some gold on the commander to uh, get him to 100%. It is stock, but it is probably going to be one of the next tanks I play. I'll probably spend uh, free XP on this sooner or later. To unlock the modules and make it playable. So uh, yeah, I don't know how good it is. Some players seem to like it, some players seem to hate it. We'll see. We'll get there eventually. And there is the French done. The Germans are a big lineup due to the fact that uh, this was one of my first nations. Or in fact, this was my first nation. I went up the Germans exclusively. Um, didn't touch the other nations till much much later in the game therefore most of my uh, first uh, 10,000 games were Germans only 
Um, we start off with a T-15, which is a Tier 3 Premium Scout. Not a great tank. I wouldn't recommend it, to be honest. There are far better Tier 3s in the game. However, I picked it up in a sale, and uh, I'm using it to train up a new crew. Um, I have no intention of doing anything with these guys, but if I play this occasionally, eventually they'll get to 100%. Eventually they'll get their first skill, and I will might move them into a different tank then. It's purely being used as a potential crew trainer at the moment. I have no goal or no target for this tank. Next one up is the PZ-35, S-35. Again, um, low tier uh, German medium tank. It hasn't got the best crew configuration due to the fact it's got a radio operator. But uh, commander and driver are there. As you can see, my Indian Panzer guys are currently in there to get some extra XP. Um, it's not a bad tank. Uh, it's definitely far better than the T-15. And um, I don't mind playing this. Um, it's okay. Uh, but it's mainly been used to uh, train up uh, existing crews. T-25 is the Tier 5 Premium. Um, it's an all-rounder. It's an okay tank. I don't mind playing this tank at all. It's got a great crew configuration that matches most German medium tanks, especially on the original medium line. So, uh, yeah, if you want to get double XP on a medium crew, this is the cheap way of doing it. As I say, this tank is uh, fairly all-round. It, uh, its gun isn't bad, but it's not great. Its armor can bounce, but don't you know? Don't rely on it. It's good in a. Uh, it's fast in a straight line. I do. I actually do enjoy playing the uh, T25. So uh, moving on, uh, VK is uh, the tank I got for free because I had the VK 3001H. I think it was, uh, or the 3001H. Um, again, this is purely being used as a crew trainer. I'm training up a new crew in this tank. I still don't have the mastery badge. It's okay. I don't mind it, but uh, there are better tanks at the tier. Um, so, as soon as I get my mastery badge in this thing, it will probably be sold and these guys will be moved into a different German tank. Uh, Indian Panzer is a tank I am currently grinding. Uh, I have everything unlocked, currently on uh, 57,000 XP, so a long, long way to the Leopard PTA. I don't find this tank too bad. Again, tank that some players hate, but uh, I'm finding it quite enjoyable. I like its maneuverability. The only thing that lets it down is its aim time. Moving on, we've got the E50 M, which is uh, a tank I don't play much. I need to play this tank more. My crew are almost at their first skill. I put a new crew into this tank. I uh, trained them up in the T25 to this level. And uh, these, this is the crew that I bounce between the E50M and the T25 to get double training on. Um, I really need to play this tank a little bit more. Haven't got a mastery badge in it. I'm on first class, I think, but I've only played about six games in it, so I don't know why I don't play this tank more. But uh, now that I'm doing the garage review, I'm going to have to. Um, I've just noticed that I don't play it all that much. Uh, next one up is the. Uh, PZB2, which is a pretty rare tank in game. It's not available anymore. Uh, it's available occasionally in the gift shop, but very, very occasionally. Um, I have got a uh, mouse crew in here. So I have never played the mouse because I didn't have a crew for it. So I am currently training up a mouse crew in here. Not much of a mouse crew because only three of the uh, crew can fit in it. But I don't have a Lerva and uh, this is the only other premium German heavy. So uh, again, I'm going to be building up the mouse crew until I'm happy with it. And when I'm happy with it, then I'll start playing the mouse. Moving on, um, E75 is a tank I'm currently grinding at the moment. I've just broken the 100,000 XP mark on it. So we are on the march to the E100. So we've got another 82,000 left to get um, on this tank, but it shouldn't take that long. The E75 is a beast. I'm happy where my crew are on it. They're all on a double skill bar this guy, but uh, he'll catch up sooner rather than later. 
Uh, moving on, Martyr 2 is a tank I rebought recently simply so that I could go up the new German TD line. I'm very close to getting the Martyr 38T. However, when I unlock it, I don't think I will be buying it and playing it straight away due to the fact that this is again is a tank I don't have a mastery badge in. So um, this is probably uh, one of the first tanks I ever bought. Um, I went up uh, the German TD line first, not even knowing the difference between German TDs and normal tanks. And I think I unlocked the Martyr 2 on my first day of playing. Um, played it till I got the next tank, the Hetzer, and uh, sold it. So um, it's not a tank I uh, ever had an opportunity to play well in. So I'm looking forward to getting some good games in this, finally, now that I know what I'm doing. And uh, we'll keep it as long and level up the crew in it as long as it takes me to get the Mastery Badge. Then we'll get the uh, 38T. Moving on, we have the uh, Dicker Max and the E25, uh, both premium TDs. These guys are currently being used to uh, train up my uh, Jagdpanzer E100 crew, which is conveniently below them. The crew aren't at 100% yet, but these guys, if I'm in the, if I have time on stream, these guys will usually get a three tank double XP workout. I'll move them from the Jagdpanzer E100 to the E25 and then to the Dicker, and uh, that's why uh, this was a relatively new crew. Uh, it was a new crew actually, 75 percenters, but through uh, giving them triple XP or triple doubles every time I uh, stream or play. They've uh, leveled up pretty quickly, so uh, as soon as these guys get their first skill, I will uh, start leveling up the Martyr crew in the uh, E25 and the Dicker Max so that I have a decent um, TD crew for the new uh, German TD line. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, moving on, we have the uh, Micro Mouse, the Mini Mouse, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is another rare tank. It is the uh, PZ-38H. And uh, as you can see, I have two pretty experienced uh, crew members in it, and um, this was an oversight on my part because I probably should have moved these guys to the mouse and trained them in the mouse, uh, but I didn't. So it means that when I do get to a new German tank that is missing a crew, I will have two very experienced crew members to put into it. So I'll take these two out, put two new 75 percenters in here, and start training them up with the occasional game. Uh, moving on, we've got the E50, which was my first tier 9 tank. And, uh, yep, yeah, as a result of it being my first tier 9 tank, it was a keeper. I still enjoy this tank. I think uh, it's great. Its gun can be pretty troll sometimes. Um, because even though it has great accuracy and its penetration is okay. Um, just It just doesn't feel as if it has 220 penetration. Sometimes it just will not penetrate shots that 220 should penetrate. Um, but uh, it's still a tank I enjoy. Um, not as much since the engine was nerfed on it. Um, the E75 actually benefited. I think the E75 is a better tank after the engine nerf. Um, it accelerates more quickly, it traverses more quickly. But I think the engine nerf really hurt the E50 because it doesn't accelerate as quickly and it doesn't traverse as quickly. Um, so uh, yeah, moving on, we've got a pretty good crew in there, so I'm keeping them in there. Uh, Tiger 2 was the my first love. Um, this was the tank I learned how to play the game in and um, learned how to angle in. And uh, yeah, I love the Tiger 2. Some people hate it, some people uh, don't like the uh, DPM, but uh, this is a very, very dangerous and tough opponent. Um, there are tanks that are arguably better at tier 8 heavy. Um, some people would prefer the T32 because uh, it uh, can go hull down and uh, it has a slightly better rate of fire, but uh, others might prefer the IS-3. Um, but yeah, Tiger 2 is always going to have a place in my heart. Moving on, uh, my second tier 9 tank, uh, which was the VK4502B, or I believe it was P originally. Um, this is a situational tank. Um, again, it's not a tank that suits every battlefield or every map it gets into. It's wonderful at side scraping. 
the E75 is a better tank. It is a better tank. The E75 can work in pretty much any situation, whereas the VK suffers in a lot of situations. However, it's got the same gun as the E75, and as I say, if you get the right map and the right opposition, this thing can side scrape better than pretty much any tank in the game. Um, so yeah, I decided to keep it just because of those legendary amazing games I have had where the maps suited the tank. But it can be frustrating when you get a run of games in this tank where the maps just do not suit you. Uh, moving on, the mouse is a fairly recent purchase and um, the only problem I'm having with the mouse is I don't have a crew for it. And like I say, I don't have a Lerva, so I can't really train up more than three crew members at once. But, uh, yep, yeah, when those guys are trained up and start getting their skills, then uh, we'll start playing the mouse. Um, Yag Tiger, Tier 9 TD. Again, one of my favorite TDs in the game. will always have a place in my heart. I uh, This was a long, long and painful grind to get to. But once we got there, it was great and uh, even stock this thing was a joy to play uh, it's always going to be in my garage I don't think I'll ever sell the Yag Tiger um, and this was my first tier 10 the uh, GWE100 uh, not that I'm an arty player what happened was I happened to be grinding up the arty lines just like every other line um, I got up to tier 6 on the arty line when the um, announcement was made that uh, tier 7 RT would uh, be moving to tier 10 so I played on the GW Tiger pretty much every second game uh, or if I survived a game every game so if I died early I switched to another tank and then switched back to the GW Tiger but I ground the GW Tiger for a month it almost killed me and uh, just to get this at tier 7 to unlock it so that I would have a free tier 10 tank when the uh, RT patch, let's just call it the RT patch, it's uh, since been called the RT nerf but um, yeah so this was my tier 7 unlock I unlocked it about two days before the patch came in and uh, it was my first tier 10 as a consequence and it's also a tank, I still haven't gotten a mastery badge in, so I will drag this thing out of the garage and play it occasionally. Moving on, we've got our uh, UK. This is a nation I started fairly recently. As you can see, I don't have that many tanks, but again, there aren't that many lines to go down. Um, I've got the Excelsior for uh, training up uh, crews. I've got the TOG for training up crews, and as you can see, it's got my future Conqueror crew in there. So I uh, switch the uh, Conqueror crew from the TOG to the Excelsior when I want to get them trained up. As soon as these guys are uh, in a place trained up as far as I want them to be trained up, I will move them into the Conqueror, which is still stock, uh, but I will probably be free XPing. Looking at this, even the stock gun is pretty good. The stock gun and the second gun on this tank are pretty much the same gun. Uh, slightly better rate of fire, slightly better accuracy, slightly better aiming time, but to all intents and purposes it is the same gun. So that makes this thing playable even from stock with the stock gun. I already had the second gun unlocked uh, from uh, the Centurion and the Carnarvon. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting the 105 or the 120, sorry, but um, I believe that um, once you get the turret, the uh, final engine and the tracks on this, it will be perfectly usable with this gun and I'll be able to grind out the uh, final gun while playing the tank. So that's probably going to be one of my newer tanks to uh, enter my uh, primary lineup. I also have the uh, Centurion 7-1 which is in exactly the same situation. The only difference with the Centurion 7-1 is that uh, again I've got to unlock some modules but I don't have a crew for it so the Conqueror crew is currently being trained up in my heavies as soon as the Conqueror crew is at a place I want them I'll move them to the Conqueror and I will move a Centurion 7-1 crew or start training up a Centurion 7-1 crew in these two tanks in preparation for when I eventually get around to playing this tank um, 
I do have the two previous tanks. I enjoy them, and that's why the uh, crews have not been moved. I'm keeping the uh, Centurion Mark I. I like the tank, so the crew has stayed there. Likewise, the Carnarvon. I really, really enjoy the Carnarvon, and uh, the crew stays there because um, I want to have a good crew in both the Centurion and the Carnarvon. Uh, the AT7 is the uh, Tier 7 TD. This will be sold the moment I uh, manage to uh, unlock the next tank. And uh, we are at 74, 75,000 now. It's not too far away. The AT7 will definitely be sold. Um, the final tank for the uh, British lineup is the uh, Comet. This is another tank I decided to keep. A lot of people get uh, disappointed with the Comet because. Um, after the Cromwell, it feels slow, it feels sluggish, um, but it's just a completely different tank. I think, I think the, uh, I think the Cromwell performs well as a scout hunter. It can chase down enemy scouts and kill them with ease. It can also be used for active scouting, but I really think the Comet is a better tank. It is a true medium. Uh, it's about flanking. It's about uh, getting into forward positions, spotting the enemy. It's about popping out, taking shots, putting back. The gun doesn't have the best alpha uh, at 140, but the rate of fire is great. The aim time is good. Uh, the accuracy is good. And um, this thing does have a pretty high DPM. Uh, I enjoy playing the Comet, and uh, I will be keeping it and playing it a lot more in future. Moving on. Uh, we have uh, the U.S., which is um, the third nation I decided to go up after the Germans and the Russians. As a result, I have a lot of tanks in the U.S. lineup. Um, and that's uh, mainly down to the fact that I have decided to uh, keep a lot of the tanks in the American lineup. A lot of the tanks uh, in other lineups were not keepers. They were average tanks, but uh, there's a lot of gems in the uh, American lineup. So... Um, we're starting off with the Ram 2, which is a Tier 5 Premium. The really good thing about the Ram 2 is its crew layout. Its crew layout matches uh, at Tier 5 all the Tier 8 American uh, Premium or American Medium tanks. So as you can see, I've got a brand new Pershing crew in this tank. Um, this was uh, a crew I purchased. I had a spare radio operator lying around, so. Um, but uh, this is a crew uh, that will be trained up in the Ram 2 to go into the Pershing in future. This crew will be alternated between the Ram 2 and the Super Pershing. Again, they fit the Super Pershing perfectly. So they'll get two games every time I decide to play them. And uh, they should level up pretty quickly. And the reason for this is my best crew in the entire game happen to be in the Pershing at the moment. And I want them to move to the Patterns. So um, the Pershing is at 125 XP, the Patton is about 50,000 XP away. The crew, even though I'm going to be keeping the uh, Pershing, um, I'm going to be moving its crew to the uh, Pattons above it, and I'll need a new crew to uh, replace them. So uh, that's why they are in the uh, premium tank. I've already trained them up for the Pershing in preparation for the day they need to move in. Um, moving on, so that's the uh, Ram, the Pershing, covered the Super Pershing. Um, Super Pershing I didn't sell by the way, I still enjoy the tank. Um, I very rarely suffered from the nerfs, I think the uh, last game I played on it in the last stream was the uh, first time I've actually noticed the nerfs that much, but it's still a good tank and uh, I'm not going to be selling it. We have the uh, T20, which is uh, a tank I really enjoyed at first. I'm not sure I enjoy it quite so much. It's a decent tank. I just find that the reload on the gun is pretty poor. Um, penet the penetration is okay, the damage is okay, the accuracy isn't great, but it's okay, and the AB time is okay. Uh, the gun is pretty much okay, but the uh, rate of fire is just a little bit too high, and uh, as a result, I don't think I enjoy this as much as I once did. I don't know why, but um, anyhow, I decided back then it was a keeper because it is possible to have monster games in it, um, and therefore it's still in my garage. 
The uh, T69 is a relatively new purchase for me. I haven't played that many games. It's fully unlocked. I'm at 54,000 XP and uh, a long, long way to go before we get the T54E1. Uh, again, it was a brand new crew in it. I trained them up from 75%. They're going quite well. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting these guys to 100% and then I think this tank will really, really start to shine when their skills kick in. Um, moving on, we've got the T29, which is another keeper, probably the best tier 7 tank in the game, in my opinion. Um, the crew are currently sitting in the T34 because they're at 99%, and I want to get them to 100%. I want to get 6 cents and get all these skills to 100%. Um, so I'm kind of double XPing them between these two tanks at the moment, and um, yeah, moving on. T32 has a fairly experienced crew. Uh, it's a tank I hated when I first started playing it, but uh, that's because I was stupid and I'll keep that story for another day. But uh, yep, T32, when it gets the right map in the right circumstances, this thing is one of the best tier 8 heavies in the game. Uh, moving on, the T18 is a tank I rebought recently because there is a distinct lack of uh, American TD premium tanks in the game and I need some TD crews for future TDs as you're about to see um, therefore I need to train them up somewhere I reckon that uh, tier 2 is probably a decent place to train up a crew I had a look at all the TDs the crew layout for the T18 is pretty good and even with a 75% crew being trained from scratch T18 is still a beast so um, yeah I've decided to uh, play the T18 occasionally so that I can level up a new crew um, or a future TD. The M8A1 was a keeper after my very first game in it. I really enjoyed it, even fairly stock, and uh, I've been playing it ever since. It is a nasty, nasty little tank that a lot of people underestimate, and it's got a really, really punchy gun. 110 average penetration at tier 4 is pretty good. Um, so yeah, I play it occasionally, crew are doing quite well. T49 I then moved on to um, and I decided it was another keeper. Really, really enjoy this tank. And again, it's a crew that I played up from 75%. Um, but yeah, they're progressing nicely and uh, I should hit my first skill anytime soon. Wolverine was a tank I was a little bit unsure of. Again, it was a 75% crew in the Wolverine. I didn't like the tank when uh, my crew were at 75%, but once I reached 100%, um, the Wolverine has sort of grown on me a lot, to the point where I decided to camo up, and I'm going to be keeping it. So the problem with keeping so many TDs, um, I've got a T18, M8A1, T49, Wolverine, is I have no TD crews. and. Uh, that leaves me with a problem for the Jackson and a problem for the Hellcat. I just don't have a crew for them. So uh, I'm going to keep building up these crews and uh, maybe as soon as I get this crew up they'll move into the uh, Hellcat and I'll eventually move the T18 crew into the Wolverine and start training up a new crew here and then eventually move that crew into the Jackson but we'll see. I really don't know. Uh, moving on, we've got the T1E6, which was a Christmas tank. Again, I don't mind this tank, but again, it's situational. Some maps really, really suit it, some maps don't. And uh, yeah, I play it occasionally, uh, but it's not on my favorite tanks list by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I've got a T2 Lite that I use for uh, training up uh, my uh, Chaffee crew. So my Chaffee crew are progressing nicely. I play the occasional game of the T2 Lite because it's just a great tank. T7 Combat Cars, a tank I haven't played much already, you know, much of, but um, it fits my Chaffee crew. So again, it's an opportunity for a little bit more XP. Uh, I should give this tank a, probably a few more games, at least until I get a mastery badge, and then I can stick it in the reserves and forget about it. Uh, the M22 Locust uh, had to purchase this tank. It is a great tank, probably one of the best tier 3s behind the uh, FCM Pack 40. Um, it has a favorable crew layout for the uh, T71. So my T71 crew jump between the uh, T71 and the Locust. And uh, they're both great tanks. 
so the crew are progressing nicely. I've already mentioned the Jackson and the Hellcat. They're two tanks I have, but uh, don't have crews for them. And finally, don't hate me, I have the M44. This is another tank I repurchased recently, put a 75% crew in it, had a spare uh, loader from somewhere else. Um, I'm not grinding any RT lines at the moment, and I felt that that was a hole in my uh, play. I do have a few premium RTs I play occasionally, or end game RTs I play, but uh, I'm not grinding any RT lines. So I decided, you know what, I'm probably just going to grind an RT line. Just one. Don't hate me too much. And that is the American line. Uh, moving on, uh, the uh, Russians were my uh, second nation. And again, you can uh, see that uh, I've progressed fairly far with the Russians. T-34 is a tank I rebought recently. Started with a 75% crew, simply because I wanted to go up to the uh, new Russian medium line. I'm very, very close to it. I uh, just need another 4,000 or so. And uh, I will be selling this tank. I've already mastered it, and uh, I'll be putting this crew into the A43, and uh, progressing this crew all the way up the new medium line. And uh, moving on, we've got the uh, Churchill 3, which is a pretty decent tier 5 premium. And as you can see, I have a new crew. Well, I don't have a new crew. Um, long before I purchased the ST1, I was planning in advance. So the 75% crew I originally put into the Churchill 3 have now progressed to the point where they are almost at their second skill. Um, so when I saw that, I only have to play another couple of games and they should hit that final skill. Um, so I purchased the uh, ST1 due to the fact I have a crew that's almost ready to go into it. So ST1 is also a tank I should start playing uh, sometime soon. I just need to uh, finish leveling up these guys in the Churchill so that they're 100% ready to go into the ST1 when I do play it. Uh, moving on, we've got the KV-4, a tank I didn't think I was going to keep. I hated this tank stock, and um, this is the tank where I decided I was never going to play stock tanks again. However, once this tank was fully upgraded, I fell in love with it and uh, decided it was a keeper. Uh, again, it's a little bit situational. It suits some maps, doesn't suit other maps, but uh, when you do get an opportunity to use this tank to its full potential, it can be an absolute beast. I played a game recently where uh, side scraping meant an ISU-152 uh, bounced three times, and uh, I think I took uh, 7,000 plus potential damage in that game, and uh, yeah, it was a decent game. The KV-4 can be an absolute beast, definite keeper. Uh, as a result, I kept the crew in it, and I needed a new crew for the ST-1, and uh, that's when I started training them up in the Churchill. The moment I decided to uh, keep the KV-4, I uh, put a new crew into the Churchill for the ST-1. Uh, moving on, same story with the IS-6, the Tier 8 Premium Tank. I don't have an IS-6 crew in it, I have an IS-8 crew in it, and these guys are ready these guys are ready to play in the IS-8. I just need enough free XP for the modules on the uh, IS-8. And uh, I will be playing that tank very, very soon. I would probably say it's the next tank I will be playing. Uh, moving on, we have uh, two Russian TDs, uh, premiums. We have the SU-100Y, the SU-12244. Both great tanks. And as you can see, um, in the SU-12244, I am building up a crew. It's progressing nicely for the uh, SU-12254. Again, it's a tank I haven't played yet because I need to unlock the modules on it before to start playing it. But uh, in the meantime, I'm uh, leveling up the crew in a premium. Uh, SU-100Y, exactly the same story. You'll notice that the Object 704 crew is in here. So I could free XP and I could play the Object 704 right now if I wanted to. But I don't have a crew for it. So um, I am leveling up a new Object 704 crew in the uh, SU-100Y. Uh, moving on, we have the LTP, which is a free tank. Um, crew layout is okay. Um, it's not a bad medium, or it's not a bad freebie. Um, I play it occasionally just for uh, the fun. 
M3 Light is a pretty average tank. Uh, this is a tank that was, it's pretty rare now. It's usually only given out as prizes or gifts. Um, it was the original tank you got for completing the original tutorial. And uh, a lot of players sold it to get a free garage slot, but I kept it. Uh, and I'm happy I did because it's fairly rare. But as for performance, it's pretty average across the board. There's nothing really special about this tank. Um, if it gets hit, it gets penetrated, but that's the same with most light tanks. The uh, T-127 is a tank maybe I should play more of. Um, I've enjoyed my games in the T-127. Haven't played that many, but uh, this thing can be an absolute beast, especially if you get it into a Tier 3 game. Uh, moving on, so the crew is the uh, MT-25 crew. The uh, T-50-2 was sold, and... Uh, the crew were moved into the MT-25. They're fairly experienced, but still haven't got six cents, which is a crime on a uh, light tank. But, um, yep, as soon as I played the uh, MT-25, I had about ten games in it. I think ten games gave me enough of an impression. Uh, and I sold it. I just didn't like it. Um, so I've had a, a light crew lying around, and those are the guys that uh, jump into the uh, LTP and the M3 light whenever I decide to play them. Um, T-54, I have a crew ready for them. Um, the crew, I, I, because I don't have any uh, premium Russian mediums, um, this is uh, a previous crew. They are fairly well uh, trained, but I, uh, I'm not playing this tank yet because I uh, still have a lot of modules to play. And this is a big decision for me because, um, yes, I could unlock some stuff on this tank already, but when you look at the two stock guns before the turret they're both terrible terrible guns so um, the real choice in this tank comes for them from the final two guns um, you've got a choice of penetration versus accuracy and aim time so I'm playing around I can see why so many players use this gun prefer this gun over that one due to the accuracy and aim time the um, and they fire a lot of gold in it so I think I will probably go for the D10 T2C first and I will load up a half and half ammo loadout um, I think with 201 pen at tier 9 it's not very good not very good even 219 isn't great but it's better so uh, yeah it's going to be a while before I play that tank because uh, I do want uh, at least one of those two guns. Uh, moving on, uh, we have the uh, KV-1S, which is a keeper, obviously. If you don't have a KV-1S in your garage, what is wrong with you? KV-2 is another keeper. Again, what is wrong with you? You have to have these two tanks in your garage. They are fun. Uh, IS-3, definitely another keeper. I didn't want to move my IS-3 crew into the IS-8. I like my IS-3 the way it is. I love the way it handles. I love the way it plays. So uh, I decided to leave a fully cre trained crew in here. Um, IS-8, as I say, I've purchased. I do have a crew ready to go into it. Um, I reckon that it is playable with the second gun. This is the IS-3 gun. It is playable. IS-3 can do damage in Tier 9 and 10 games, so this gun is usable in Tier 9 and 10 games, so I just need a little bit more free XP, and I'll be unlocking these three modules and using the IS-3 gun to uh, unlock the final gun. But uh, yeah, IS-8 is very, very close to being played, simply because I have a crew that's ready to go into it. ST-1 was a purchase I made for a video, but that's a different story. Um, purchased this recently and uh, yep I, again same story as before I've got a crew that's almost ready to go into it I don't think that this gun it's usable but I don't think it's great it's pretty much the same story as the IS-8 uh, this gun is good this gun is better so um, accuracy and aim time are just putting me off on this gun so I'm debating whether or not to uh, play it with this gun and just unlock the engine tracks and turret and grind this gun while using this one or simply just unlock these and uh, keep playing 
or uh, wait till my XP builds up again and uh, just get that gun. So I don't know. I really haven't decided what I'm going to be doing with the IST1. SU1, uh, SU, ISU152, I'm starting to lose my voice here. ISU152, great crew in it. I'm very happy with this tank. I didn't want to move this crew to the Object 704. That's why I'm training up a new crew. Uh, Object 704 could be playable today if I wanted to. I could free XP this, and it is 100% playable. Problem is, I just don't have a crew for it. So um, I'll wait till I build up the crew. Uh, SU-12254 has a crew that's very, very close to going into it. This is a tank. I won't wait to unlock the final gun. I decided that this gun, uh, even though, like the previous uh, ST-1 and uh, the IS-8, the penetration isn't great, um, I do reckon the rate of fire makes up for that. It's got a great rate of fire. Uh, it worked really well on the SU-101, and I think that I will be using this gun to grind out the final gun. So this is another tank I think you can expect to see fairly, fairly soon. Uh, as I say, I've got a crew that's ready to go into it, so uh, yep, you're going to be seeing this tank sooner rather than later. Object 704 we've covered, and finally my RT, the S51. Used to be my favorite RT in the game, the only reason it's still in my garage is that I paid gold for camo. And uh, then, uh, so I don't really want to sell it. I've uh, been playing around with taking the crew out of it and putting it into a different tank, but um, this has a 48 second reload, and even with fully stocked with a gun rammer and uh, brothers in arms, um, it still has a 48 second reload. So I dread to think if I were to remove the crew and put a 75% crew in here, what this tank would be like. It would be even worse than it is now, so. I'm keeping it in the hopes that someday Wargaming come to their senses and realize no one's playing this tank anymore and maybe buff it a little bit. Uh, finally, our last nation and another new purchase. 75% uh, crew on it. I spent a little bit of gold to get the uh, commander up to 100% because the view range isn't great. And uh, yeah, I will be playing this for the first time in a future stream or tomorrow's stream or whenever I decide to upload this. So. I'm going to start working on a uh, Japanese crew for the uh, new Japanese lines that are coming into the game next patch. So that is my garage review. As I say, this is more for me than uh, for you guys. I'll look back on this in six months and see how I've progressed and how my predictions went. And uh, I'll do another garage review in six months. If uh, you're watching this and you're new to my stream, well, then you'll have an idea of how I play my tanks why I play some tanks and not others um, and it's mainly down to not having crews for them um, so while I'm training up a crew I uh, am building up free XP to unlock uh, modules so that is it I will uh, catch you again if you manage to stay awake through all of this thank you for watching and uh, hopefully this will um, limit some of the questions about the tanks in my garage or why I don't play certain tanks um, have a good uh, evening, and I'll catch you all soon.